Hi everyone, today's tutorial is going to be learning how to cast on two needle, knitting needles. What I have in front of us to work on today, for this demonstration I will be using I Love This Yarn. It comes from Hobby Lobby. If you do not have one any anywhere near you that you can get yarn from or order it from, any four weight yarn would classify the same as what I'm going to use. But for learning to cast on, you can use thread if you had just thread. It does not make a difference. This is just what I'm using to demonstrate and show you how to cast on. Okay, the color I'm using is Burnt Pumpkin. And I think that that's pretty well represented. What do you think? All right, let's zoom out and get started. Here we go. So I'm going to take some, some yarn. And sometimes the easiest way to figure out how much yarn you need to have for a long tail cast on you can take your yarn and hold just a little bit of the tail onto the needle, just like such. And say I wanted to put 15 stitches onto this needle by a long tail cast on. I would wrap the yarn around the needle 15 times, just like that. I don't do this every time because I've been doing this for a little while now and I'm pretty good at guessing. Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. And once you have 15 wraps around your needle, you just slide it off your needle, just like such. Where you're holding from the end, where you just ended those 15 wraps, you're gonna to wanna to slide your hand down just a hair longer. So that way, just in case you don't run short. Now I am going to make a slip knot, and if you need instructions on how I make a slip knot, in my basic crochet stitches 101 series, the very first video I show how I do a slip, slip knot. So I just do it real quick. Then you're going to place that loop that you just created by doing a slip knot onto the needle in your right hand and draw it up. Whoops, not draw it off your needle, but draw it up. Just like such. You don't want it so tight that you can't move it back and forth on your needle. You want to be able to slide it very easily and have enough room left over that you can put the second needle into that loop as well. You don't want it extremely tight. So with your working yarn to your ball on your left and your tail down here to the right, we're going to pick our needle up and grab hold of those two strands gently, 
just like that. And slide our hand down like that. Then I want you to take your index finger and point it towards your needle and rotate it and place it in between those two strands of yarn. Just like that. Okay, then I want you to bring the needle straight up above it. And while holding the yarn in your hand, you're gonna lift your thumb up and put it in there with your index finger. It was lonely and needed a friend. Okay, then you're going to stretch them out so you have a V going on, an upside down V. Okay, rock your thumb and index finger up. I'll do it this way. Spread them apart and rock them up so that way. You're pulling that yarn up over your thumb and index finger, just like that. So now it's kind of like a slingshot. Your needle's facing up, your fingers are facing up, and you have this V. What are we going to do with it? Well, now we're going to learn our long tail cast on stitch itself. Slide that needle down so that way you can see the tip of it closer to your slip knot, okay? And while your uh, yarn, sorry about that, while your yarn is still held in your hand, you're going to take the tip of your needle and you're going to point it towards you and go down to the palm of your hand, slide under that bottom, yarn thread, come up between, see how it's like that, come up and over the one that is around your index finger, pick it up and then come back through that loop that's on your thumb and now you have two loops on your needle. Well, here's the slingshot part. Drop it off your thumb and place your thumb back in with your index finger and bring it around just like that so they both look the same again. Okay, we're gonna do that again. Hold those two loops that are on your needle, those two stitches that are on your needle Rock your needle pointing towards you. Slide it towards your hand and under the bottom yarn thread on your thumb. Bring it straight up. Go over the one that's around your index finger and back through the one on your thumb. Release the loop on your thumb and pick it up to start again. Let's start from the very beginning and do this one more time. So I have a slip knot. I'm gonna place that on the needle in my right hand. I have my working yarn to my ball on my left, my tail out to the right. I'm gonna pick that needle up, grab hold of those two strands, slide my hand down, hold those two strands in my hand, point my index finger, pick it up and put it, place it between those two strands of yarn. And because it likes company, bring that thumb up and add it into the same space between the two strands of thread. Rock your needle and the yarn around your fingers, so that way they're both pointing up. Slide that slip knot towards the tip of your needle and hang on to it so it don't slide off. Rotate your needle so that way the tip of it comes towards you. 
then around towards the palm of your hand, picking up the bottom strand off your thumb, around, up and over, and around the strand that's around your index finger, and then bring it through the two strands that are on your thumb. Release the loop off your thumb and reach down with your thumb and pick up the thread, the strand of yarn, and do it again. Because now you have two stitches on your needle. Point the needle towards you, rock it down to your hand, slide it up under the bottom strand of yarn on your thumb, Lift up, go over the strand on your index finger, then bring it back through the two on your thumb and release the loop on your thumb, bringing your thumb down and back into the same position, picking up that thread again. You now have three stitches on your needle. Now I'm going to add the other 12. That's four, five, six, seven, eight. And occasionally, see how the yarn is creating a pigtail because it's being twisted the wrong direction. And it can cause problems trying to put stitches so what I do is stop for a minute, let go of the yarn, and release that energy so that way it goes back to the way it's supposed to be and it's not untwisting. The twist is not coming out of your yarn anymore. And then I start over, grab hold of the yarn, slide it up, insert my index finger, bring the thumb over for company, and start again. I had eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, doing it again, 13, 14, and 15. So now I have 15 stitches on my needle. And I have some leftover tail there. So that is a long tail cast on. Okay, and another way that you can cast on. So we're gonna come all the way down here to the end and do a slip knot just as I would have done if I was going to crochet. So I'm just gonna add a slip knot to the end of this and place it on my needle, just like if I was going to crochet. So another way to do this is you can hold your working yarn in, my, in your left hand with your thumb sticking out like you're gonna ask for a hitchhiking ride. Get that thumb out there. And you're gonna place it on top of that strand of yarn coming from your needle, push down, let me do that in camera a little better. Push down on it, bring it under the yarn and up, and slide it off onto the needle. Do it again. Down, around, and up, and slide it onto the needle. Again, down, around, up, slide it onto the needle. Down, around, up, slide it onto the needle. That is one of the easiest ways to cast on. But I do not recommend doing that unless you have to, and that's the only way you can do it. I do recommend a long tail cast on for most projects. Some smaller projects, you can also do this cast on. Once again, you have your slip knot on your needle. 
Now you're going to bring your other needle over and you're actually going to add stitches by inserting your needle into that loop below the other needle. Then you're going to wrap that yarn over the top of the needle and slide it down and pull it through that loop and bring it up. Then what you're going to do is turn your needles towards the same direction, not towards each other. Turn them the same direction so that way they're pointing away from you and bring that loop that you just made on the right hand needle and from the back side of it, place it onto the other needle just like such. And we'll do that again. Insert the needle in your right hand under the left hand needle through the loop from the side closest to you. Just like that. Take your yarn, wrap it around the needle, Slide your needle back towards you. Pull up a loop from the loop that was on your left needle. Draw up a loop. Turn your needles pointing away from you. And slide that right needle into the new loop. Take up the slack. And we'll do it again. Insert your needle from behind the stitch that is on your left needle and below your left needle. Insert your needle into that stitch. And you wanna make sure that it's going into the stitch itself and not between. See the difference? You can see that the whole loop is in front of that needle. You don't want that. You only want it to go in behind one side, okay? Wrap your yarn around your needle and draw up a loop, just like that, okay? You're gonna pull that loop up, turn your needles pointing the same direction and slide that loop from the back side onto your left-hand needle and just pull on your working yarn to tighten up any of the excess loop that's there when you make it. So we'll do a couple more together. Just like that. Okay, now that you've done a few of those just like that, we're gonna do it exactly the same way. Don't get in a big hurry, hang on. Exactly the same way, gonna wrap our yarn and we're gonna pull that loop up and we're gonna place it on that needle. But don't take your right needle out. Go ahead and rock it around and place it under that left-hand needle. Now you're set up to do another one. You just take that yarn and place it around the needle, pull up a loop, same as you were doing. Face your needles away from you, the tips of your needles. Place that loop from your left onto your, or from your right onto your left. So now both needles are in there. Place your right needle Rock it so that way it just goes underneath the left needle and pull the working yarn to take up the tension and you're set up all over again. See how it's only holding one of those bars of that stitch? Legs. And you just, we'll do it this way. Wrap your yarn around the needle 
pull up a loop, face them away from you. This is what they'll look like if you were looking at the ends of your needle. Draw up that loop a little bit. And slide it off. Well, we don't want to slide it off because we're going to leave that needle there. Slide your left needle into your loop on your right needle. Take up that tension and you're set up to do it again. You're set up to bring the yarn up over that needle and pull up a loop, place it on to the working needle over there. Take up the slack. Just like that. Okay. Like I have said before, in other videos, there is no right or wrong way. There is your way. Find out what works best for you. I've given you a few options here as to how to cast on for a project. Find out what works best for you and do that. And when you feel comfortable and have learned how to cast on and you're actually moving along knitting and purling and doing your work, I suggest trying to do the others. So that way you know how. But for now, you have learned a long tail cast on. You learned how I just placed the loop on the needle from a slip stitch or a slip knot and just wrap my thumb around the working yarn and put a loop on the needle and just do that. You learned how to do that. So that's two ways. And then you learned how to put a slip knot on your needle and use two needles to draw up a loop and place the loop on and continue doing that until you have the stitches that you need. So you, now you've learned three different ways to cast on. Go practice and have fun and come back for learning how to knit. We are going to learn how to do the knit stitch in our next Knitting 101 series videos. Thank you for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up and let me know. Until the next time, be blessed and be a blessing. Bye.